Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how I made a Christmas carousel out of a wooden round box. So let's get started. I came across this decorative box in my local Dollar Tree store and from the first glance at it I immediately decided it would be a great base for a carousel. I'm turning it upside down. Also, I need to make a post in the center. I'm using bamboo skewers for that purpose. I'm cutting several skewers to the desired length. Here I have about 5 inches. I'm hot gluing several skewers together to make a rounded post. I'm sanding the edges to make it stand upright and hot gluing it to the center of the base. I'm also turning the box cover over, it has a nice rim from the inside and also hot gluing it to the post. I'm cutting out two strips about an inch wide out of corrugated cardboard and pressing the cardboard with my fingers so that the strips get a rounded shape. And I'm hot gluing the strips around the roof, making overhanging sides. Then I'm going to add embellishments. I'm making two vignettes out of cell hardening clay and attaching them to the sides. I'm using white glue to attach them, it dissolves self-hardening clay a bit and the elements stick well to the base. I'm also making tiny angels to decorate the base. I really like these molds, the figures are very neat and detailed despite their size. I'm attaching the angels to the vertical carved parts on the sides of the box. All these molds are from a local Russian store, unfortunately they do not ship internationally, I think, but I'll try to find links for similar ones for you and will leave them in the description box below. What I like most in self-hardening clay is that it adheres perfectly to the surface without any gaps and I don't know anything better for decorating curved objects. As for the brand of clay, now my favorite one is Darby Rock. It molds well and doesn't crack either during the walk or after dry. Don't forget to put the unused piece back into the bag and seal the bag tightly after work so that no air gets into it. By the way, if self-hardening clay has dried a little, I add a little white glue into it and knead it well until I get rid of any lumps and it becomes nice and smooth again. I'm also decorating the top with small vignettes on its sides, making kind of frame triangles. I'm decorating the vertical carved parts not occupied by the angels with small bows. And finally, to trim the edges, I'm using a mold in the shape of beads. I'm attaching the beads to the base of the central post. And I'm also trimming the lower edge of the roof with beads. Mm -hmm. 
and more trim goes around the entire circumference of the bottom part of the future carousel. I'm waiting till the embellishments dry well. I've also decided to make a topper on the carousel roof. I'm making it out of a part of an egg holder and a wooden bead. You can use a furniture handle, buttons of different sizes or whatever you have on hand. After that I'm priming the entire carousel with white glue and leaving it to dry. I've searched for quite a while for suitable horses for the carousel, in the end the best one came from a toy soldier set, I will also try to find something similar for you. I'm drilling a hole through the horse. The size of the drill bead depends on the diameter of the skewer which you will use to attach the horse to the carousel. After that I'm attaching the skewers to the horses and fixing them with a drop of hot glue so that they do not move over the stick. I'm painting the carousel in a light cream color. I'm priming the horses using acrylic primer. And then also painting them cream. Time for brighter colors. I've decided to make the carousel in red, blue and bronze. I'm painting the framed triangles red. I'm tracing the floor of the future carousel into sections and painting part of them in red as well. Usually the roof is painted this way in a circus and I want the carousel to be a part of circus themed decor, so I've really wanted to add this detail. I'm also painting the edge of the roof in sections. And finally I'm painting the vertical parts on the sides of the base where I've added the bows red. Then I'm switching to the blue color. I'm painting the vertical parts with the angels blue. Here I've had to paint in two layers to get an even color. I'm also painting the parts protruding over the floor blue and finally the tope and the roof trim. Next is the bronze color. I'm painting all the embellishments on the roof bronze. as well as the bit decor, bows and finally the bead on the topper and the carved part of the cover.
After all the paint is dry, I'm going to edge the carousel and I'm going to be using Benjamin Moore acrylic glaze for it. It is to be mixed with acrylic paint in a ratio of 4 parts glaze to 1 part paint. I have a premixed jar of bronze glaze made out of the same bronze paint that I've used to paint all these embellishments. So I'm applying this glaze generously onto the surface and immediately wiping it off with a damp cloth. The glaze will stay in the recesses on the surface and will be removed from convex and smooth places and the carousel therefore gets a noble vintage look. Mixing these is a trial and error method. Practice first on a scrap board to see if there is enough paint in the glaze. If it's not enough, then the glaze doesn't age much at all. If there's too much paint, then the surface will look kind of dirty and it's hard to remove the excess glaze. Try to work in small sections so that the glaze doesn't have time to set. If you don't want to mess with glaze at all, just try brush the surface with white color, although the effect will be different, since this way you will highlight the protruding parts instead. You can also use duck wax instead of glaze. In the process of removing glaze, I've also removed some bronze paint underneath in some places, because I haven't dried it very well before covering it with glaze. In fact, I like this look, it kind of adds to an overall vintage feeling. Finally, I am also adding ornaments onto the base using contour paint. I'm painting the horses in the same colors as the carousel itself. I'm painting the saddles in red and blue. And I'm making manes, tails, hooves and harness details bronze. Finally, I'm also glazing them. The carousel is going to be a lantern. I'm drilling a hole in the base next to the central post and I'm threading fairy lights through it, leaving a part of the garland from the inside of the base and the other parts over it. I'm adding the lower part of the garland together with the battery pack into the base. As for the upper part, I'm wrapping it around the post. Fixing it with a drop of hot glue under the roof. And I'm placing the rest of the garland under the roof, making kind of scallops, leaving only the odds visible. I'm placing them at an equal distance from each other to make it look like the roof is illuminated by lanterns. Next, I'm going to install the horses. I'm applying a drop of hot glue onto the skewer and attaching it to the base. I'm doing the same with the upper part of the skewer. Here, make sure that it stands upright. You can also drill holes in the base and hot glue the skewers into them. All that is left is to cover the base of the carousel from below. I'm using brads and cardboard to be able to get inside and change the batteries later. And the decorative lantern is ready. 
Such a lantern would make a charming Christmas decoration. It looks so cozy and old fashioned, great for a nursery or under a Christmas tree, and I think you'll agree with me that it looks almost magical at night. By the way, as you can see, I didn't use any special Christmas decorations here, so that this is not necessarily a Christmas decoration. You can use it all year round if you wish. Any round box can be used for making a similar one, and you can also use ribbons, beads, jewelry parts, and whatever your imagination tells you for decorating the carousel. Hope you liked my Christmas carousel. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of today's project. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!